In this video, I'm going to be going over how you can change the lighting of your image generations in ComfyUI. So we're going to be using the ComfyUI IC Light extension. And the easiest way to get this installed is just scroll down to where you'll see the example workflows and then right click on the middle one over here and then click save image as. And from there, what you want to do is just drag the image into your ComfyUI. And most likely what you'll find is that you'll have a few red nodes in your workflow. And to easily rectify that, all you need to do is go to the manager and then click install missing custom nodes and install all the nodes that are listed here. Once you've done that, restart your ComfyUI. And there's one more additional step that we have to do, and that is to download the IC Lite models over here. So there's two ways to do this. The first one is just go to the manager, then click on install models, and then type in the word IC Lite, and then click search. And for the time being, just download these two models over here. So the FC and FBC. And once you've installed them, you should be good to go. Now, unfortunately, trying to download the models this way didn't really work for me. So what I had to do was go to the Hugging Face page over here, which I will link in the description below. And what I had to do was download the models directly from here. So I downloaded the FBC and FC models and then I just place the models into my models unit folder in my ComfyUI directory. Now once you restart your ComfyUI you just need to select the FC model for now and then choose the model that you want to use and you'll also need to provide a starting image as well. So now with everything ready to go I'm just going to click Q prompt and this was the image generated and you can see that the image that was generated has a much different lighting than compared to what was originally generated. Now let's say that I didn't like the color of the image over here, how it started from orange and then gradually went to red. Let's say I wanted something like blue instead. So all I have to do is go to the start color over here and then type in the word blue. And now if I generate my image again, we can see that the image color has changed and instead of the orange, we do have a blue tint. Now I think this is a bit too dark, so what I'm going to do is now change this to white and then click Q prompt again. And instead of the blue tint this time, we now have a white tint. Now that's not the only thing we can do. So looking at this gradient image over here that influences the final image, I think that the black starts too early in the gradient. And so I can make it that the white takes up the majority of the gradient rather than it being a 50-50 split like it is now. And to do that, what I can do is go to this node over here and then drag this all the way here. And now if I click Q prompt, now you should be able to see two things. The first one is that in the gradient image, the white takes up the majority of the lighting and in the actual image itself it is much lighter than what it was before. Alternatively, I can change the direction of which the light is coming in. So to do that, I just have to rotate this over here and then rotate this over here. And now the white will start over here and the black will end over here. So now if I click Q prompt and now the gradient has changed and also the lighting direction has also changed. Now, another thing I want to point out is that the prompt wording that you use also affects the actual image that is generated. So for this image that I generated, I use the word neon red as well as the red starting color over here. Now look what happens when I change this neon red to something like fire instead. And now if I click Q prompt, you should now be able to see that even though it's still red technically, the red has become much lighter and more resembling the lighting that you get from a fire. So using the prompt is a very useful way to further specify the color that you want. Another thing I want to show you is something you may have already noticed, and that is the color actually influencing the actual image itself. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to change this start color to white, and then I'm just going to drag this up over here just to make sure the whole gradient is covered with white. And now if I click Q prompt, now that the image has been generated, you should spot two things. The first one is there's a lot of white lighting in this image, but also the actual features of the person has changed. So now it looks like his hair has changed into something like white or gray and the actual color of his suit. And if you compare this to the actual input image over here, you could tell that he originally had black hair and a black suit. So the easiest way I found to fix this is to actually use the original prompting within your prompt. So for example, this was the actual prompts that I used to generate the original image over here. 
And so what I'm going to do is just copy this and then going back into my Comf UI, I'm just going to delete this and then paste it in. And then I'm also going to paste in the negative prompt over here. And once that's pasted in, I'm going to click Q prompt again. And so this was the image that was generated. Now, unfortunately, we didn't fix everything within the image and the whiteness still affected the portions of the image, but the effect is a lot less drastic. And just for comparison's sakes, this was the original image when we weren't using the original prompt. And this was the image when we were using the original prompt within the image. And of course, the easiest way to make sure you don't really deal with this problem is just to make sure that the image gradient that you're using isn't that steep. So now if I extend this again and then click Q prompt, we now have the image that was generated and it closely resembles our original image a lot more than it did before. Moving on, we're going to be going over the second workflow. So if you just right click and save this image over here and then drag it into your Comf UI. Now you may have missing nodes in your workflow and the easiest way to fix that is exactly the same way that we did in the first workflow. That is by going into the manager and clicking install missing custom nodes. Apart from that, what you need to do is change the actual model that we're using. So this time we're going to be using the FBC safe tensors file instead of the FC file. And we also need to supply two images this time. So you need to supply the foreground image and the background image. Once you've done that, just click Q prompt. And this was the image that was generated. Now this workflow does multiple things. The first thing that it does is actually isolate the subject from your actual foreground image that you provide. So it's taken the man over here and isolated it from the rest of the image. And it also takes this background image and sort of uses it as a base to lighten your image over here. So for example, if I use the sort of darker image instead, what would happen is the lighting that this person received would be darker as well. There's also this lighting mask over here. And what that does is just dictate where the lighting will come from within your image. So if I want to change this and change where the lighting is coming from within the image, all I have to do is go to the location X and Y over here. And then I can specify something like 512 by 512, which is the boundaries of my image. And I could also change the actual width and height. So I can keep this at 300 and then change the height to something like 100. And then now if I click Q prompt, you can see from the image that was generated that now the lighting is sort of coming from the bottom right. And if you look at the shape mask, you will also see that the lighting is also coming from the bottom right as well. I can also change the shape of the lighting as well. So for example, if I want it to be square and now if I click Q prompt, it may be hard to see, but the image of the lighting has changed now to a square. And because of that, the image lighting of the actual final image has changed as well. And just to demonstrate how the actual background image affects the lighting of the foreground, I've changed the actual image over here. And now if I click Q prompt and looking at the image, you will now be able to see that he has more of a reddish tint to him than he had previously when we were using the lighter image over here. And once again, I just want to show how changing the lighting mask will change the image. So this time I'm just going to go roughly in the middle. So I'm going to use 250 and then 250 again. And now if I click Q prompt, and this was the image that was generated, and this was the lighting mask that was generated. And comparing it to the image that we generated beforehand, you can clearly see the difference between the two. So overall, I think this IC light extension is an excellent way to change the lighting of your image. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.